Alabama State Council on the Arts, National Endowment for the Arts, Silicaga Marble Festival, Silicaga Arts Council proudly presents the 2020 Magic of Marble Festival. Welcome. I'm Ted Spears, Chairman of the Silicaga Marble Festival, and we are looking at Plan B. As you all know, we had to cancel the sculpting aspect early on because of the coronavirus, and what we planned on uh, did not happen. So what you all are looking at will be the result of our scrambling to come up with something that would leave a footprint in the 2020 year and also glorify Silicaga Marble. What we had been looking at for some time was a historical approach to uh, some of the great people who had been in Silicaga and Moretti lived here and he owned a marble quarry and he was already famous. Geneva Mercer, who was a statewide girl and spent time as an apprentice and she spent the rest of her life with Mr. Ms. Moretti and when they lived here in the Sulacaga, and she studied under him and, and sculpted and followed them all over the world, as well as places in the United States. We also uh, hired Frank Murphy to do the bust of Geneva Mercer, and then we hired Craiger Brown to do the bust of Giuseppe Moretti, and both of them are native Alabamians, so I thought that would be a historical approach that would be interesting to certainly all the historians and, and certainly to the lineage of the marble industry in Sulacaga. We included a Plan B at the uh, recommendation of uh, Dr. Knight and uh, Amy Jenkins, so that if uh, the sculpting situation is such that we can't get together again, we will have a plan B already in place. And we have that, and it will be emphasized in sculpting, but it will involve more people, and it will involve a different approach to uh, assigning uh, commissions and how we do it, and uh, it will be done on site and it will be done at the, the local studio of the individuals involved. And in so doing, we can get a more dynamic and a more diverse approach to sculpting and the, the kind of people that we would have. And it will showcase more sculptors than what we were able to do. I'm Tracy Thomas, the director at the B.B. Comer Library in Sylacauga. And we are one of the organizations that helps to provide organizational support for the Magic of Marble Festival. We do that in several ways. Of course, we house the marble collection, so each year when the festival is over with and the master sculptor leaves his sculpture that he's finished, we house those here at the library. So we have a fantastic collection of marble pieces. Another way that we support the festival is we also house the sale room, which is where when the artists come in, the sculptors come in, they can leave pieces for sale here for people to look at samples of their work. And what makes that so unique is that some of the sculptors don't even sculpt marble on a regular basis. They may sculpt wood or they may sculpt metal. So we actually have a great demonstration of their talent all the way around. And we also, our staff here at the Comer Library, they absolutely love um, getting to work with the public when they come in. And so the two weeks of the Marble Festival, we host tours, we do um, groups that come through the library that want information about the festival and about Silicaga Marble. So we also really play host to all the tours that come through. We show a movie that talks about the quarrying process in Silicaga. So we do as much as we can on our end to make sure that when people come to Silicaga, that it is actually a destination point for them because they have a place to come, they can see the marble, they can get the education, and that is one of the things that we have always loved here at the library is that we can be a source of education, entertainment, and enrichment. And that's not just through books and resources. That's through things like housing a marble collection that is world class. It's unmatched by any other. So we are very pleased to be a part of the Marble Festival in that manner. We have always recognized here at the library, thanks to the visionary Dr. Shirley Spears that worked here for many years as the library director, 
that a visit to the library could be so much more. And we recognize that when we have school children that come in or people that just stop through our town to visit, they are blown away when they come in and they realize that they can see fantastic original pieces of art. They can see these fantastic marble sculptures. And so we are in the process now at the library here of actually creating a gallery style area that when people come in, it'll be a starting point for them to do a self-guided tour as they go through the library to see the marble pieces and to know what year, which marble festival they came from. So we're really excited to be actually building on what we already have here and making it more of an organized gallery type experience when you come to the library. One of the things that we really hope will come as a result of the Marble Festival and our involvement with that is that when people visit the library and they see these beautiful sculptures, that they will be inspired to think about the cultural arts and to investigate the wonderful cultural arts that we have, not just in this library, but in our area. And we also hope that people will recognize the value of Sylacauga strictly as a destination point. This town has so much to offer and we really and truly feel like the Marble Festival and the, the partnerships that the festival has brought about have positioned us to be a piece of that puzzle. Hi, I'm Ruth Beaumont Cook. I call myself a narrative historian because I like to write history that is based on stories about people and how they're related to the history that I want to tell. I've written two other books before coming to Sylacauga, one called North Across the River, that is about a Civil War incident. And the second one, Guests Behind the Barbed Wire, which is about the German POW camp in Aliceville, Alabama during World War II. And following that, I was called down here to Sylacauga to find out about the history of the marble quarries and of the relationship of the sculptor Giuseppe Moretti. I worked on the project off and on for about eight or nine years as the Marble Festival was developing, and it's been an interesting project, a challenge to find the stories and to pull them all together. So Giuseppe Moretti, who was a well-known Italian sculptor who had been working in New York, first came to Alabama not because of the marble, but because he was commissioned by the Commercial Club in Birmingham, uh, the forerunner of the Chamber of Commerce, to create a cast iron statue of the god Vulcan. And so he came here to do that. And while he was here, he was visiting with a man named Charles Adams and saw a marble sculpture. It was of an open book, a Bible, on his desk. And he asked, where did that marble come from? And Mr. Adams told him, oh, well, right down there in Sylacauga. And he was amazed because he had not seen marble of that quality in this country before. Throughout his career, he compared the marble here in Sylacauga to the marble in Carrera, Italy, and to the Parian marble from the Greek island of Paros off the coast of Greece. So he was very, very impressed. But in that early period, 1904 up through 1908, he created several sculptures from the Sylacauga marble. The first one, uh, which I actually came across last, was a bust of Dr. W.E.B. Davis, who was a prominent gynecologist in Birmingham and died in a horse and buggy accident. And the the local people wanted to memorialize him, and they commissioned Moretti to create this marble statue. A similar thing happened a couple of years later. Mary Cahalan was the first teacher at the Powell School in Birmingham, and when she passed away, they asked Moretti again to create a sculpture of her. And if you visit Lynn Park in downtown Birmingham, walk out the side of the Lynn Henley Research Library, you'll be staring right at Mary Cahalan's sculpture in Birmingham. There's also one at St. Vincent's Hospital of Father Patrick O'Reilly, who founded the hospital in an orphanage, and all of those were commissioned for Moretti to do. But throughout his career, he promoted not only the, the artistic quality of the marble, but also for use in architecture. And Moretti gets the credit for that, for having promoted it. So he very much 
believed in the marble and did everything he could to make it acceptable across the country and across the world. The other figure that's part of this project with these sculptures is Geneva Mercer, who was born in Marengo County, Alabama in 1884, but she became a student at the Alabama Normal School. Um, she was very fortunate that Julia Tutwiler, a name that was recognized all over Alabama, was the president of the school at that time and was her mentor. Julia Tutwiler decided that she needed to be able to pursue her career beyond the normal school, which would have been like high school. So she decided that she was going to find scholarship money so that Miss Mercer could continue her studies in Chicago. So she took some little uh, red clay sculptures that Geneva had created, put them in a market basket, and took the train to Birmingham because the commercial club was having their monthly luncheon, and she decided if she went there, she could solicit contributions for this scholarship for Miss Mercer. Well, things took a totally different turn when she got to Birmingham because Giuseppe Moretti was at that luncheon. And when he saw those little sculptures in that basket, he basically said, she doesn't need to go to Chicago. She can become my apprentice, and I would love to have her in my studio. She worked with him in his studio. She helped put up the armatures for large sculptures, like the ones they did in Havana for a cultural building. And he also had her copy various, pe various pieces of sculpture to learn how to do it. And one of those was his all-time favorite sculpture that he had done himself, which was called The Head of Christ. And it was depicting Christ in peaceful repose after the crucifixion. But he had her make a Plaster of Paris copy of it. And it was so good that it still resides in St. Jude's Catholic Church in Sylacauga. The Morettis encouraged her to pursue her own art projects. It wasn't, she wasn't just an apprentice to him. She was an artist in her own right. She has a beautiful sculpture called Joyous Boy that is in the gardens at the Phipps Conservatory in Pittsburgh. She also created a, probably her best known piece, which is called the Flint Fountain, and it's in the Montgomery Museum of Fine Arts. She also did a marble bas relief of her mentor, Julia Tutwiler, which is still on display, I believe, in the Capitol Building in Montgomery. She is definitely a Renaissance representative of women in Alabama. So finding the resources was, was a challenge, but the archives at the Birmingham Public Library, the archives in Montgomery, and I also discovered that there were scrapbooks that Dorothea Moretti and Geneva Mercer had created that were in the Julia Tutwiler Library at the University of West Alabama. Uh, Geneva Mercer's sister's home is now a museum in Marengo County. One thing about Alabama that I love is that families and communities store their history. They keep their history, whether it's oral or whether it's written down, and, and that always makes the, the challenges of a project easier to deal with. Well, one of the trials was figuring out what was true and what was not among the things that people told me. One of the early stories, Dr. Ted Spears, when we were talking about the beginnings of the project, he said, now people are gonna tell you that Enrico Caruso, the Italian opera star, came here to visit Moretti when he was living in Talladega County. In this particular case, the Birmingham Public Library archives had the answer in black and white because when I went there, one of the little trays that they brought out to me contained four handwritten letters in the handwriting of Enrico Caruso, and they were written to Giuseppe Moretti. He asked Moretti if he would carve a little white horse for him to keep on his desk, and you know, they were joking things back and forth, but we were able to debunk that one and, and find out that it was true. The sculpture of Giuseppe Moretti done by Craig Brown and the one of Geneva Mercer by Frank Murphy represent the beginnings of the story of Silicaga marble. I hope that people who come to the library to view these will take that as an opportunity to find out more about their stories and about how they contributed to the history of Silicaga marble. 
My name is Craig Brown. I'm a native of Birmingham. I grew up in Vestavia Hills. I uh, went to college at University of Montebello, and upon graduating there, I went to Lacoste School of the Arts in Lacoste, France. Uh, studied for a year, was hired as an assistant professor of sculpture for a year. From there, I got a Guggenheim scholarship to Venice, Italy, and I worked in the Peggy Guggenheim Museum for four months and studied. And from Guggenheim, I moved to Carrara, Italy, which surprisingly enough is the only other source of this beautiful white marble. And I laughed that I went halfway around the world looking for this quality of stone, not realizing that I had it here in my own backyard here in Alabama. Currently, I'm the sculptor in residence here in Silicaga and just love the fact that I'm able to promote my home state, this home natural resource, which is just truly white gold. It's an amazing, amazing material. And thrilled that I have this opportunity. I consider myself fortunate at the age of 22, I discovered limestone and that was the first carving that I'd ever done. What I love about it so much is it's a complete reversal. It's destructive, it's destruction for creation. It's already there and as the artist, you uncover the beauty that's inside the stone as opposed to Every other medium I had worked in was constructive. You start with nothing and you build up. You know, there's just something to the sound of a hammer on a chisel on a piece of stone. And, and then, you know, this white marble in Silicaga, it, it has a mystique that, that no other stone in the world has. I grew up in Birmingham, Alabama. So I grew up in the shadows of Bulk and, and seeing the impact that that had on people of Birmingham and the pride that we had in it. You know, just, just a great honor to be entrusted with, with the chance to uh, try to capture Moretti in a bus. And, uh, you know, I, I couldn't be more grateful. Well, one of the major issues of someone like Moretti, there's really not a lot of photographs. And so you really have to dig to, to find photos, and they're rarely of the same era of his lifetime. And, and so really it's just finding imagery of, of that person. When you're doing a portrait of, of an actual person, it's, it's good to work out the details beforehand and, and really, again, try to capture that emotion at, at the same time, capture the bone structure, the expression, the, the overall feel of the piece, you know, already had great hair. I'm jealous, I'm kind of bald myself, and trying to capture that wavy, fun hair that he had, and you know, and again, the intensity of his look. And by working out those details and getting it as close to how I see Moretti, it made it easier. So you're not searching in stone. Clay is easy to manipulate. You can pull a chunk off and start over if you don't like the nose and marble. Once you carve it, it's there, and so. It was important for me to get everything right in clay before I moved on to the stone. Well, I tried to capture his intensity, his focus, and you know where he's really concentrating, he's really paying attention and observing, hopefully the viewer. But at the same time, as far as his mouth, with an expression of it, it, it's very peaceful. You know, and I've tried to capture just a, a very pensive, focused look, and hopefully that they'll they'll feel the intensity of Moretti's soul in that piece. Hi, I'm Frank Murphy. I'm an artist, a sculptor, and a painter from Rome, Georgia, but I grew up in Sylacauga, Alabama, and it's always a privilege to come back home to Sylacauga to be a part of the Sylacauga Marble Festival every year. I've done a lot of different things in my life. I've worked in ministry with students, and I've done a lot of painting murals at other places. Every place that I've gone, whether it's in Africa, South America, uh, I have been able to share my art with people there, mostly in painting and those kind of things. But this was an opportunity for me to share my love of sculpting and to be able to uh, do a project that uh, fits into my my growing up world, the place that I grew up. And so it's been a delight to, to be a part of this project and I'm grateful to Silicaga for inviting me to participate in it. I think part of the challenges for 
of carving someone from history is that they are a real person. They are someone that has particular features and they look a certain way. And so as you carve them, you want to be true to the image of that person. And, and you know, that's, that's important in, in carving uh, the bust of someone from history. Uh, if it were Abraham Lincoln, we have lots of images of him. We have profile shots of him and straight on shots and side shots and in between. Uh, for Geneva Mercer, there were not as many photographs to, uh, to be able to use and to, to be able to uh, look at in, in part of this project. I was grateful to Ruth Cook for sending me some photos of Geneva, and we had pictures of her from various times in her life, when she was young, when she was older. Uh, so the challenge really for this was to decide on the time. This, 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 this is the age we want her to be, and this is kind of the pose we want her to have, and what did she look like during that time there. So that, those are the challenges of doing a historical figure. I had a chance to read uh, Ruth Cook's book and the entries that she had about uh, Geneva Mercer in it. And, of course, have since read the booklet that uh, is a part of this project to, to know more about her. But I knew that she was an artist. And because she was an artist, I felt like she was right over my shoulder all the time looking at what I was doing. And, and I, every time I do something, I was thinking, will she like this? Will she approve of this? Is, am I doing this the way she would suggest that I do it? Uh, so her influence over me was that. Uh, I knew there was an artist who, who was a skilled artist who was kind of looking over my shoulder throughout the project, and I wanted it to be something that she uh, would be happy with. There are always trials uh, for a, a marble sculptor or a stone sculptor because marble sculpture uh, is involved in breaking off or cutting off uh, the pieces that you don't want and leaving on the pieces that you do want. Well, in the midst of this sculpture, I accidentally knocked off a part that I needed to keep on. And I had to start the entire project over because it was flawed to a point that couldn't, could not use the piece as it was. So there was always that challenge for a sculptor, especially a stone sculpture, not to break something off that is needed. I guess there, there was some difficulty because I had made a couple of decisions about the design that would push or stress the stone a little bit. I, I decided early on I wanted her hair to be up in a bun kind of look. I realized later that that put a lot of stress on the stone just because of the sheer weight. The hair was the weight of stone rather than of hair. It wasn't light, and so it did put a lot of stress on what I did. And so it did end up making some differences on what choices I made about how it was to look. Uh, the stone itself had its own unique size and shape, and so you'll look at it. It's a little bit turned to one side. I wanted her head not just looking straight on. I wanted to have a little bit of a turn to her head. So when I did that, I had to eliminate a little bit of maybe part of her, her body that I would have done if, if she had been looking straight on. So that, that was, a, that was a, a challenging part, and it was a, a difficult thing to make a decision on. But that was kind of the way I wanted to do it because I, I didn't want her looking straight ahead. But I wanted a little bit of turn in her head. When they come by here, I, I, I hope they'll grab a, one of the books and read about Geneva and her life, the extraordinary life that she lived, the, the way she uh, kind of stepped out in faith to do something that she had the talent to, to do, but she had the courage to do it as well. And I hope when they look at this sculpture, they'll want to know, who is this woman who lived 100 years ago, who, who was a gifted artist, who would step out in faith and, and, and do what God had given her the talent to do and to be able to use it. And maybe it'll challenge someone else to say, you know, uh, I, I don't have uh, much, but this is what God has given me. I want to use what I have and use it the best I can. And so I hope that they'll look at her life and appreciate the courage and the faith that she, uh, she lived in throughout her life.
the founding purpose of the Marble Festival was to recognize the commercial, the industrial, and the artistic values of marble and the marble industry. And in doing so, we uh, have moved ahead with the different marble pieces to the point that we assign the master sculptor's piece from Italy to each one of those men who come in and women. Those pieces automatically come to this library. And uh, we didn't realize it at the time. We just felt like it would be nice to have that in the library. We didn't realize that we had the uh, beginning of an opportunity to have the finest marble sculpture exhibit anywhere in the world. And it gives Sulacaga an opportunity to be more of a destination point for tours and people who are interested in art. So I'm just thrilled with the direction in which we're going. And it can only get better and it can only make all of us look more significant than we ever dreamed. I'm satisfied with the end result and that it, uh, it, it accomplished what we wanted to do. It recognized four Alabamians. All four people have a connection to Sylacauga. All four have a connection to the art world. And it put us on the map as a destination point if you want to see the best marble collection in the southeastern United States. Join us for the 2021 Marble Festival, April 6th through the 17th. Hope to see you there.